Welcome to Colorado. This is America's outdoor playground. Here we find winding country roads, endless aspen forests, and of course, the mighty Rocky Mountains. Landscape photographers travel from all across the world to visit these legendary lands. Everyone comes in search of gold, snow, and sky. And Colorado delivers these brilliant visual gemstones with great abundance. Travel these trails long enough, and one eventually learns that landscape photography comes in many flavors. We have intimate scenes tucked deep into the forest, and we have grand sweeping vistas which stretch as far as the eye can see. For the opening portion of our lesson, we will be focusing on the greater landscape. Here we find vast open valleys, endless golden aspen forests, and towering peaks. The air is fresh, the sun is out, and the camera is waiting for the visual feast to begin. Here at the beginning of our adventure, we find ourselves in the foothills of the San Juan Mountains. This range is a subset of the greater Rocky Mountains. Often called the Switzerland of America, the San Juan Mountains deliver a stunning initiation to our fall colors expedition. All right, friends, it is time to talk mountains. We have the absolute trifecta going on right now. Perfect fall colors, beautiful broken clouds, and snow on the peaks. This is everything that a landscape photographer could ever hope for. So let's take a look at our scene. All right, friends, welcome to the beautiful San Juan Mountains. It is an absolutely exceptional day in Colorado and we have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. Now, for our first lesson, I wanna refrain from digging deep down into the technical aspects of these images. We will have plenty of episodes in front of us to talk about shutter speed, f-stop, bracketing our images, and balancing our exposure. For now, I'd simply like to start us off by talking about composition and a little bit of visual storytelling theory. Here we are at 16 millimeters. Now for many photographers, the 16 to 35 is the go-to lens for all things landscape. It enables us to capture the entire scene all in one frame. We have a huge amount of sky, a huge amount of valley, and plenty of foreground elements right up close to the camera. And while we can see everything all at once, there is one small drawback to this particular composition. As far as I'm concerned, the mountains are simply too small. When we have our lens pulled back this far, the mountains, which in my personal opinion are the most interesting part of this scene, are very, very diminished. I didn't travel halfway across the state of Colorado to shoot tiny mountains. And the irony to this is that these mountains are actually gigantic. When you behold this scene in person, they are literally the biggest thing in the sky. And yet, here they are, tiny little specks on the horizon at 16 millimeters. So let's take a look at what happens when we zoom in just a little bit. And now here we are at 35 millimeters. We have zoomed in substantially and given much more credence to those beautiful snow-capped mountains. They are no longer tiny little specks in the distance, but rather hold a much stronger position in our composition. And while this scene is starting to take shape nicely, I think we can still do a little bit better. Earlier in this lesson, we discussed the importance of the panoramic format in the world of landscape photography. My personal philosophy is to follow the composition that Mother Nature delivers. And to this end, I see our primary composition residing right down the center of the frame. Not too much sky, not too much foreground, just pure valley, aspen forest, and mountain. Now, let's kick things off with a little bit of inspiration. We're gonna take a closer look at some of the final images from the opening portion of our expedition. This initial series were shot natively as panoramic images. That is, they were stitched together from multiple frames. The primary reason for choosing this format resides within the mountains themselves. In the distance, we see a long chain of interconnected peaks. It's kind of hard to tell where one mountain ends and the next mountain begins. They all work as a system, and that system is long and wide. Let's take a minute to see what this composition would look like as a single 35 millimeter frame. For all intents and purposes, it's not bad at all. But now that you already know the full extent of this landscape, are you really gonna be satisfied with this tiny little glimpse right down the center? Either way, this mostly just comes down to your own creative preferences. There is no right answer, so don't worry about what other people think. All that really matters is what makes you happy as an artist. 
And this is where we can begin to take our viewer on a little journey of visual storytelling. For our next image, we move just a few feet to the left. And here we discover a quaint little country road entering our scene. Now, many landscape photographers go to great lengths to avoid including any form of human impact on the composition. No roads, bridges, fences, cabins, nothing of the sort. Nature should be pure and uncompromising, a complete escape from society. This philosophy certainly has merit, and if this is the style that you wish to chase, by all means, carry on. However, if we look at the road as a compositional tool, we can see that it creates a nice leading line which draws the viewer into the scene. It also helps to tell a story. What's at the end of this road? Does it lead to the base of that fantastic mountain range in the distance? I would love to go there someday and find out for myself. And since we're telling stories, the road does in fact lead to the base of this fantastic mountain range. Once we're here, we discover a charming split rail fence wandering through a meadow of fiery red broom sage. Rows of ponderosa pines rise towards the mountains as the setting sun begins to paint the clouds with golden light. And just beyond the pines, we discover a magical reflecting pool, which on calm evenings creates a perfect mirror image of our spectacular snowy mountains. Sunbeams slice through the aspen forests and cast a warm light upon the still waters. It's the perfect way to spend the evening and the perfect place to find yourself when the golden forests of Colorado are at their best. All right, obviously this is an absolutely spectacular scene. We've seen a little bit of favoritism from both Lady Luck and Mother Nature today kind of a rarity, but hey, I'll take it. I think these images are going to look fantastic. I can't wait to see them on the computer, so we'll see you in Lightroom. And so, whether you decide to include the occasional fence or omit the human footprint altogether, either philosophy has its advantages. Now, we have certainly covered a lot of ground here at our first location. In the lessons to come, we will be taking a deep dive into the digital workflow to showcase exactly how these images are edited using both Lightroom and Photoshop. And so the first portion of our adventure kicks off with wide sweeping vistas. We experience the classic landscape formula of forest, mountain, and sky. The colors are beautiful and the conditions have been in our favor. And this means we owe it to mother nature to do justice to these inspiring locations. And justice will be done. Up next, we launch into a digital workflow that will unlock a whole new creative world for your photography. And we'll see you in the next lesson.